What do you hope comes out of this? Well, I think I'll be a lot more careful about using social media. Amid a sudden uproar over his provocative social media interactions, Tennessee Lieutenant Governor Randy McNally sits down this afternoon to answer Phil Williams' questions about the controversy. Now, those social media interactions with a young gay model brought accusations of hypocrisy against the East Tennessee Republican and counter charges that he's become the victim of a left-wing attack. Well, our chief investigative reporter Phil Williams has covered McNally for more than 30 years, and he has the exclusive details with the man who says his posts reflect his evolving views on the LGBTQ community. Initially, I was not very kind to that community. As I learned some things and met some people in that community, I realized that they're still individuals and they still have value. In a legislative session dominated by bills outlawing drag shows in public places and targeting gender care for the trans community, Tennessee Lieutenant Governor Randy McNally finds himself facing accusations of hypocrisy after a progressive site unearthed his social media interactions with a 20-year-old gay model, among them provocative posts that were liked by the 79-year-old Republican, including one where the young man... So do you hear what he's saying here? He's saying that these posts reflect an evolving acceptance of LGBTQIA people, that this was him being woke. You know, it's a bad, it's a bad word for the GOP, but that's what he's trying to say. Is that like in the past, maybe I was homophobic. I liked this young man's post to show that I appreciate you, even if you're gay. I like, I mean, that sounds great and everything, but you didn't just like a post of a gay guy being like, listen, I'm gay and I'm, I'm proud of myself and there's nothing wrong with that. And people who have a problem with that, the problem was with them. Like, right. That, that would be great. That would be great if this was what's going on. You never heard from this guy about any problems that he had with what the Tennessee governor just signed into legislation, which is one of the most restrictive anti-trans pieces of legislations out there. Right. The idea that if you interpret this bill the way that it could be interpreted, right? You're you're saying that people aren't allowed to be trans or gender non-conforming in the presence of anyone younger than a certain age, i.e. you're not allowed to be trans like anywhere. When people see these posts, what should they take away from them? But yeah, well, he's liking sexy pictures. The thing that's wrong with it is the hypocrisy. The thing that's wrong with it is not what you're doing on Instagram, but it's what you're doing in the legislature. I don't know that they should take away a, a whole lot. In an exclusive interview, McNally described how he befriended the young man. He looks kind of like a melted version of John Bolton. Facebook, then on Instagram. Among the posts, this close up of the young man's backside, McNally responded with three red hearts and three on fire emojis, along with a comment, Finn, you can turn a rainy day into rainbows and sunshine. Is this cancel culture gone wild? Is this a left wing hit job? You know, I, 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 or, or is this somebody who's like applying a standard to, to other people that he sh he's not upholding himself? Huge amount of hypocrisy. I encourage people with posts and try to, um, you know. So he says he's trying to be encouraging. He's trying to be accepting. Um, I don't know if that's what you communicated with those. Um, emojis. Help them uh, if I can. Were you trying to help this young man in some sort of way? Uh, just basically trying to encourage him. There was also this post where the man said he was, quote, not a whore, but a hoe. One is a slut, the other is a prostitute, adding, I'm the one that gets free weed for giving, then a reference to a sexual act. And it was liked by Lieutenant Governor McNally. Yeah. I don't know that, you know, a lot of times on people's posts, you see the name and you see what they've written and you just... I mean, that's fair enough. Like, sometimes you don't see an entirety of a post. Sometimes you might like something that upon further reflection you might disagree with, right? Listen to what he but says, so you though. You didn't read uh, that post? I don't recall reading the part about the the uh, weed. I know that. But what about the prostitute? I might have I might have read that. In that... I might have read that case, was it appropriate to, to like the comment? Probably not. Probably not. Then we came to a moment in our interview that could not be avoided. I need to ask the question that people are suggesting on social media to, to let you respond to it. Have you ever had any personal relationship with this young man? No. You've never met him in person? No, never have.
In fact, we found other LGBTQ-related posts liked by Tennessee's lieutenant governor, who says he's gotten to know members of that community, including some from his own family, and that he's tried to be more affirming of their identities. He also knows... Well, if you want to be in for affirming of their identities, then speak out against what your governor's doing. That he has spoken out against some legislation pushed by his Republican colleagues. Okay, see, so he's worried about the blowback from businesses. That's not the same. That is an economic concern for the state of Tennessee. But there's more at stake here. There's a lot more at stake in the fact that, like, all you can do is offer some weak, like, concern over this might really hurt our businesses here in the great state of Tennessee. Like, that's just, I don't know. How does anybody buy this? How is anybody buying this? Does this affect your ability to lead? I hope not. And I've had some of my colleagues say that they're supportive. This is why those fiscally conservative, socially liberal folks aren't helping anyone. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm really, really sorry if I've embarrassed my family, embarrassed my is friends. Is anyone buying this? Well, like like they're going to say later, like are they, they, they made some nod to the idea that some on the GOP are claiming that this is an instance of cancel culture. That this was some kind of a left-wing hit job on my dude here, right? Any, any of the members of the legislature with the post, it was not my intent to, and not my intent to hurt them. Roll call, Mr. Clerk. In the end, the Tennessee Senate chooses the lieutenant governor, a title that senators can also take away. Have you thought about resigning? I think that's really... Okay, so that's interesting. It's not that he's nominated by the governor. So it's not quite exactly like a vice president, right? But it is definitely somebody that has clout, whose opinion matters. And if what is happening is disgusting, unprecedented anti-trans legislation in your state, and you're concerned about LGBT people that you know in life, LGBT people that you know in your own family, the least you could do is speak out against the bill. Speak up for gay people, right? There's, I mean, like I was saying, there's nothing wrong with this. I didn't realize that we we're talking about a 17 year old. Obviously that's, that's messed up. What's wrong here is the difference in the standard that he's um, allowing um, LGBT people to be held to in his state, which is like in the case of the, the bill, you know, not to uh, be in drag or to be trans, not to wear clothing that don't quote correspond with your birth sex, which is a ridiculous notion on its face, right? In public, you know, for, for fear that it might harm children somehow to, uh, to, to see that, right? He's holding that standard there. And then, you know, as, as far as, as for himself, it's, it's, it's not obviously, you know, something that he really believes in that that's the problem. Up to the members of the uh, the Senate. It's almost like the hypocrisy hasn't done. I don't know. I don't know if he's like covering it up. I don't know if he's hoping this will blow over. I mean, you've seen we've seen this kind of thing before. You've seen Republicans ignore like similar issues right at the national level. And generally how that works is this, right? They want to have a majority. They want to have all of their senators, all of their Congress people, anything that might diminish that is a, a situation where they can say, you know, hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil, right? And they can ignore it, right? Because what they want is to enact more anti-LGBTQIA legislation and, and keeping, you know, a member of uh, a legislative body in there, you know, even one who, who doesn't uphold these principles, these conservative principles in their own personal life is, is a way, a means to an end, right? So that's generally... That, that's generally how that works. It would serve at their pleasure, and it, it would be up there my boss. Bill Williams, News Channel 5 Investigates. There is no doubt that Lieutenant Governor McNally is extremely active on social media, often offering positive comments about people's families, latest achievements, as well as birthdays and anniversaries. He tells Phil if there's any lesson for him, he needs to be a lot more careful with what he posts and how those posts might be perceived. God. It's my Patreon. I would like to thank all of my Patreons. Oh, oh, they are objectively better people than either you or I. Unless they are you, in which case, ooh, ooh. 
they get to view the videos before you. So they've already seen this and hit like and left a comment and joined and became a member and all sorts of other cool stuff. They hit the bell for notifications. If you'd like to join them in the land of tomorrow, watching videos early and all, you can sign up for my Patreon too. The link is in the description. Ooh, ooh.